What's up people, Dr. Walters right here and welcome to a special top 5 or oh, actually no, it's a top 10 this time because it was extremely difficult to do a top 5 and this is a shout out to this person here on them requesting this now to be honest I had to do this in two different videos because let's just let you guys know soundtracks there's two different types of soundtracks in the world you have the movie soundtracks slash TV and also you have the gaming soundtracks now, as you guys know, I love soundtracks. I freaking adore them. I adore them more than actual not standard music. I don't know why, I just love the music that they put in movies and in video games because they have the feel of of tension of in the film, of in the video game. It, it mixes well with the game or the film. But just to let you guys know, I have loads and loads and loads of soundtracks that are on CD, vinyl, and also on cassette tapes. Now, if you guys really want to see my whole entire collection of my movies slash video game soundtracks, I'll put a poll down below after I've done two videos of this. So you've got this one today, which is a movie one, and the day after will be the video game one. So you guys have a good little mixture of top tens coming your way. So today, as you guys know, it is the movies. Now, just to let you guys know, I have about over 30 movie soundtracks in my personal collection, whether they're CD, vinyl, or tape. Now, it's very difficult for me. It really has been, because the reason why, because I buy them because I love the film, or I buy them because I love the music, so that's all I'm saying. Now, there is a thing about this. I had to make some rules for me for this top 10. Well, first off, I must own the soundtrack, meaning I have to have it on CD or on vinyl or on tape. I can't go and say that I own it, that I have it on iTunes or I have it on Spotify because I don't have it as a physical copy. So there's that. And just to let you guys know as well, there might be some soundtracks out there that you may be saying is like, oh, what about this movie? What about that movie? If it's not on record or on CD, I won't own it. Or if it is, I do not own it because I can't find it anywhere. But anyhow, i got 10 of them right here, my personal favourite of my collection. I'm going to really try and cut it down as much as I can, but also the other two rules, just to let you guys know. One, per, one movie, one soundtrack per franchise, so I can't go ahead and say, I don't know, Home Alone 1, Ho Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2 and Home Alone 3. That's not going to work. And also, no Disney. If I said yes to Disney, literally everything on this top 10 would have been Disney. It wouldn't be fair. So, no Disney in this one. They're going to be proper movies from proper films with proper soundtracks. So, let's get this started with number 10. And I'm going to show you the actual physical copy of it right in front of you. So, the first one for number 10 is Titanic. Now, you might be thinking, really? You love this Titanic soundtrack? I freaking adore the soundtrack. Now, with this one's the original, okay? Which has, of course, Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On and a lot of the awesome music from Titanic. However, this CD was missing a few soundtracks from the movie. Thankfully, a few years later, they made the second version, which is Back to Titanic which has all the rest of the songs that were in the movie, like the um, Irish Party the Irish Party um, in the third class. If you guys remember that scene with Jack Dawson and Rose, that was one of my favourite um, scenes in the movie. You have the most saddest scene of all time, which has the song called... Um, do you remember now? Um, oh, God, no. Um, Near My God to Thee, which was when the Titanic was actually sinking with the um, guys who were playing the violin. That always makes me cry, which I really love this song too. But also in this one as well has Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On as well. Now, why is it number 10? Well, pretty much, I can't really go ahead and say that these don't belong in any particular order because these are all my personal favourites. But why so low on this is because... The, it's just literally a lot, a lot of orchestra music and everything. And I know some of it is pretty much exactly the same stuff. So, you know that. Pretty much a lot of that tune is in nearly every single one of these songs. Unless you class this one, which has a lot of different music. But if it had a lot of other music compared from that tune, probably this would have been a lot, lot higher. But still, I love the Titanic. I love the soundtrack. I love the movie. So that's why it's my number 10 spot.
number nine, and this one's on vinyl, and that is The Goonies. Now, The Goonies is an ace in my personal collection in movies. It's my childhood favourite. I love all the characters in this film. And if you guys do not have never ever watched The Goonies, please, God, watch it. It is an absolute phenomenal film. And it's it's just ace. Look at the artwork of the of the record. I love the artwork of the record. That's the thing I love about it too. But as well though, for a 1980s film, for me being born in the 90s and falling in love with this ace of a film, it's absolutely phenomenal. There's two records in this and it has nearly every single song in The Goonies. The only thing that's missing out of this was the Cyndi Lauper song called Goonies. And if you might be thinking, what do you mean by the Cyndi Lauper? Well, Cyndi Lauper was the main singer in this film, which was a huge, huge success in her career. She's the same singer who sang Girls Wanna Have Fun or um, Time After Time or True Colours. She was also in WWE Hall of Fame. But this movie rocks and the soundtrack is absolutely awesome because there were so many different parts of the music that were so different. You had upbeat, you had intention, you had a little bit of um, slight thrill or horror type of feeling. You had a bit of pirate feelings like with little tiny trumpets like doo -doo -doo -doo. It's absolutely phenomenal and that's definitely my number nine spot. Why, could, why is it not higher? Well, pretty much there is a lot of other films that I actually really do prefer more than this. But this is freaking awesome and I love it. If you haven't seen it, please go ahead and watch this film. Or if not, listen to the soundtrack. It's ace. And like I said, I might try my very damn hardest to try and find a full playlist of all the soundtracks in the description down below. I'll try my very damn hardest so you guys can listen to them as well. So that's my number nine spot. My number eight spot, once again, is on record, and a massive shout out to the company, Wax and Beans, is the Full Monty. Now, this is, if you guys are not from the United Kingdom, you won't have a clue what this is. Now, this is a British film, and pretty much it's the English version, and it's the originator of Magic Mike. If you guys have seen Magic Mike, you pretty much have seen this, but this is a lot better, just to let you guys know. This is Magic Mike, without any of that testosterone and buffed up men these are normal people in britain just taking their clothes off for i have no idea what reason was i completely forgot about that film scene it's like i don't have a clue what the reason was why they were taking the clothes off i have no idea but what's so good about the soundtrack well the soundtrack has everything in it it has music from david limpard hot chocolate tom jones m people Cockney Rebel, Gary Glitter, has everybody in it, even Sister Sledge. Now, everything in this film is absolutely top notch. And if you guys are thinking, what is this film? This sounds like a shit film. Some of you may like it, some of you may hate it. It depends on what you feel like it. To me, I think this is comical gold. It really is comical gold. It's super funny, it's quite etchy and it has a fantastic story because the main character he has a relationship with his son and it's like falling apart and then he's trying to get back together with him and everything because he's a divorced husband and he's trying to get connections with his son and everything back to normal it's a great story um just literally it's hard to explain what full monty really is really it it's very difficult if you guys really want to see that film Try and watch it on Netflix or anything like that. I'm sure you can get it on Netflix. I'm sure of it. Or um, on Amazon Prime. But as well, if you want to hear the soundtrack, I'll leave it in the description down below. But literally, a lot of fantastic songs on this. You have You Sexy Thing, You Can Leave Your Hat On, Moving On Up, Make Me Smile, The Full Monty Theme Tune, Rock and Roll Part 2, Hot Stuff, We Are Family. Everything's in this. Absolute awesome music so if you guys want to check that out please do that is my number eight spot now number seven is on cd i wish i had it on vinyl because i would listen to it nearly every single day and that is the blues brothers now blues brothers is absolutely phenomenal and you guys might be thinking is that really a musical or is it a standard story film I class this as a musical, all the way through is a musical. 
Now you might be thinking, what type of music's in this lot? Pretty much blues, bit of rock and roll, nothing, nothing extreme or anything, but it's just an absolute ace of a film. Now, if you haven't heard of this film, I'd encourage you guys to definitely go ahead and try and watch this film. It's absolutely phenomenal. I love it. It's pure genius. We're on a mission from God. <laughs> now, you may be thinking, what is the story really all about? It's pretty much um, Jake and Elwood are two guys who um, are trying to raise money for, the, for an orphanage, which is about to get shut down. And the only way to do it is to make big money. But however, they're getting caught with the law and the law's after them whilst they were trying to make money for these um, for these sick kids, well, for these poor orphan kids and for the sisters. But the music in this is absolutely spot on. Um, she caught a Katie, you got the Peter Gunn theme. If you guys haven't heard of the Peter Gunn theme, you, you are definitely missing out. Give me some loving, love it. Shake a tail feather. Everybody needs somebody and sweet home, um, Sweet Home, Chicago, Jailhouse Rock from Elvis Presley, Mini the Moocha, which is sung by the real legend himself, Cab Calloway. You have yourself the theme from Rawhide, which is another one of my favourites. The whole entire song and the actors who are in this film, who, who sings all these songs, 100% 100 one of my favourites out there as a movie. And there's another one. Aretha Franklin is in this film as well, who sings one of her biggest songs ever, You Better Think. And if you guys haven't seen that scene from this film, please watch it. It's fantastic. And once again, I'll leave a link in the description down below to listen to the whole entire soundtrack of The Blues Brothers. So that's definitely my number seven spot. Now, number six was a difficult one because I love this film and my brother loves this film very much dearly. And that is Dirty Dancing. And there is two different ones. There's a normal Dirty Dancing and then there's more Dirty Dancing. This has more songs in it than this one. Well, extra ones that you didn't get in this one. But why number six is because there's a lot of songs in these that I really do enjoy. I really, really do. Mainly a lot more on the CD of the Ultimate Edition, which has 26 songs. This has about uh, 10 each. So, yeah, that has 20 out of, from two records. This has 26 that has a lot more stuff in it. But there's not a lot of songs in Dirty Dancing that I actually really enjoyed. What really got me loving the soundtrack as much is because of all the great songs that had it. Like Be My Little Baby. The Time of My Life, which is the most iconic song in the film. You had yourself, um, Love is Stranger. You have Patrick Swayze's song, She's Like the Wind, which is one of the most heartbreaking and beautiful songs in the film. Hungry Eyes, which is another one which is absolutely ace, which is from Eric Cartman. Is it? Eric Cartman, not Cartman, it's from Blooming South Park. That's his name, Eric Cartman. And then you have Hey Baby. You know that one? Hey! Baby, ooh, ah, I want to know if you be my girl. That's in it. Literally, the original of them all. Not the one that everybody knows, the originator of it all. Now, why is it, like I said, that's the main reason why it's not even higher enough. It's because there's some of the songs I was not really fond of, which were, shouldn't really be in it, but whatever. But as well though, what really kept it high enough for me was because it's freaking Dirty Dancing. I love Dirty Dancing. It's a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, please do watch it. There's nothing really else to say. It's just a fantastic, beautiful, musical type of film. Not really musical, a lot, a lot of dancing. Of course, it's Dirty Dancing. But the story's fantastic and it's just a classic chick flick happy ending type of film it's it's hard to explain what it's really all about but really it's a thing that a lot a lot of people love who were born in the 80s and 90s and the people who absolutely love patrick swayze so that is my uh, number six spot now number five was luckily wasn't going to be number five because i didn't own it i actually picked this up two days ago 
and I couldn't stop listening to it because I love this film so, so much, and that is Chicago. I love Chicago. I was so happy I found this on CD two days ago. I was hoping to find it at one day, but I was thought to myself, I might not able to get this on the list. But luckily, I did find it, and I'm just so flipping happy that it's now on the list, and it's now in my personal collection. Now, literally, everything's on this song. A lot of great jazz songs, like um, All That Jazz. You know, All That Jazz. You have one of the most insanely villain songs of all villains. She had it coming. The Cell Black Tango. Love it. You had All I Care About Is Love. Fantastic. Um, we have we both reached for the gun. You have yourself one of my favourite songs in the film, Razzle Dazzle. You have one of my favourite female songs in this movie, which is called um, um, When You're Good To Mama, She'll Be Good To You. Fantastic. But like I said, though, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about, I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below for the playlist of the soundtrack of Chicago. Now, why is it not higher enough? Is because some of the songs on it... To be honest, were actually shortened in the CD. In the actual movie, they were a lot, lot longer. But sadly, in the CD, they shortened them for some weird reason, which was a bit of a downer. But still, though, I still love it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Definitely is my number five spot. Now you get into my number four to number one spots. And all, pretty much all four of them should be number one, but I couldn't do anything about it. I had to put them down in this order because a small little fraction reason. First one, number four, is Oliver Twist. I have been trying to find this original Oliver Twist one for years. I've got at least seven different copies of Oliver Twist from different plays, from different movie adaptations. This is the originator. The one everybody knows. The one with, you got to pick a pocket or two, consider yourself at home, will you buy my sweet red roses, I will do anything for you. Everything is in this. And it's my absolute favourite musical of all time. It's my, one of my favourite ever musicals as I was a child. But as I got older, there was a lot of other amazing musicals out there. But this, though had everything. Now you may be thinking, why is it not 3, 2 or 1? It's just I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't. The other three films are so much better, I think, when I got older. But this though still has a massive place in my heart. If you haven't seen Oliver Twist, I'd encourage you guys to watch the original um, Oliver Twist movie. Or go down in the description down below to listen to the playlist. So there you go. That's my number four spot. Number three, oh man, is Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, once again, it's an absolute fantastic musical and a fantastic movie adaptation to the play in the theatres. I never saw the adaptation of, in the plays. I have never seen it, except for watching it on YouTube, which I find was really entertaining. But the movie made it. It was fantastic. They had the right actors for the whole entire film. And the music was completely correct. 100% correct. Now, you may be thinking, it's not only Mamma Mia 1 that was absolutely amazing. Because it's it's a, like, slightly a draw. Because I had to put Mamma Mia 2, here we go again, as a tie number 3. Because both of them have pretty much exactly the same music. But with this one with a few little extras, thanks to a very legendary singer, Cher, with uh, Fernando, and also some also or other great ABBA songs like I Kiss the Teacher or Why Does It Have to Be Me. But both stories were fantastic. This one's just a classic chick flick. Everybody loves it. Musical. Everybody's jumping and, and loving ABBA. This one's more of a bit of a sad ending thing, uh, a sad and happy thing, because if you guys don't know the film, Please go and watch it. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's a beautiful, beautiful story. It's sad as well, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And you might be thinking, which one do I prefer more? The sequel is better. Way better. And a lot of people may be thinking this is a lot better, but I really prefer number two. It was so good. 
But either way, these are my number. This is my number three spot. Love them to death. Definitely worth bronze. Now number two and number one. I was like, which way do I go? Do I go for the originator or do I go for the one I fall in love with in this day of age? And I had to go with my this day of age as my number one. But literally, this has been dear to my heart since I was a child. And that is the classical Grease. Now, I'm that much of a fan. I actually have both the CD and on record. Now, this Grease, I can't say anything about it. Everybody knows this film. If you guys have never seen this film, you guys have been living in a rock for many, many years. John Travolta, one of the most hottest guys on national films for many, many decades. Doesn't look good anymore, <laughs> just let you guys know. And he had one of the most beautifulest ladies of all times. Um, John, um, 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 Olivia um, Everton, I keep forgetting her last name. Both of them were fantastic in the film, really were, and to be honest, absolutely amazing voices. Now, not only they had amazing voices, but other actors in this film were fantastic singers. And literally every single song in this film was absolutely spot on. However, only one I was not happy because... Oh, it, even as well in the film, I didn't want it to be in the film because I just did not like it. And that is, to be honest, uh, Hound Dog from Shanana. And that's what they called the band, Shanana. I did not like their adaptation to Hound Dog. I did not like it. It's the only one I actually skipped from any of the CDs or the record. It's the only one I don't really have anywhere else. Literally, my whole entire favourite song out of them all, besides, you know, the classic ones like Summer Nights, Go Grease Lightning and Look At Me, I'm Sandra D. I love Beauty School Dropout. It's my favourite. It really, really is. It's my favourite out of the whole entire film. And I love it every single time. But that's probably one of the reasons why it's number two and not number one. Because of Hound Dog. That's my main reason. If the Hound Dog wasn't in it and they changed it with something else. Or had a different version of Hound Dog. Like Elvis Presley's Hound Dog. It might have um, got number one. But what's number one? And, to be honest, in my eyes, one of the best musicals ever. Now, a lot of people may disagree with me that with this because a lot of people are either a little bit cringe-worthy or a lot of people don't like these type of people, i.e. transvestites and transgenders and all that, which we are in that day of age that a lot of people don't like them. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Fucking love it. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. Great music, a great story, great actors, great musicians, the great tunes, the great everything. It has a bit of comedy horror to it. It's freaking amazing, people. Literally, everything in this. Sex, horror, wildness, transvestites, everything. Everybody that's wants to know about this film you gotta watch it it's hard to, literally you have to be so crazy to not watch this film everybody needs to see this film to, just to have a bit of a taste of it and if you want to know as well even the big massive fans the super fans who go and see the theater show dress up as all these characters like dr frankenfurter um magenta riff raff Damn it, Janet, or Brad, or Rocky, or Meatloaf. Meatloaf is in this film as Eddie, who sadly dies in this film. Spoilers! Um, but it's just absolutely amazing. It's just pure lost, if you guys want to know. But besides that, though, what's the music like? All the music's amazing. Science fiction, the time warp. A sweet transvestite, the sword of Damocles. You have yourself, damn it, Janet, touch me. You have Eddie, Rose, tins my world, so keeps me safe from my trouble and pain. I'm going home. Superheroes. Um, try and remember, Hot Petunia, which was made, which was sang by Meatloaf. Everything in this movie is ace. Now, if you don't believe me, 
I'm going to leave a link down below as, as well for this soundtrack. And I literally, there's going to be a lot, a lot of work for me to give you guys that, um, links to the soundtracks down below. Because I really want you guys to definitely listen to all these soundtracks. If you guys are a bit bored and you want to listen to something different, this is definitely one to listen to. 100%. And that is my top 10 favourite soundtracks in movies. Now, like I said, I've got over 30 soundtracks of movies that I could talk about forever and ever. But like I said, after the next video, which I'll be talking about my video game top 10, I'll be putting a poll up saying, do you guys want to see my personal collection of soundtracks from movies and video games? And you will be seeing every single one of it I've got. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in a few days for the next part, which is the top 10 video game soundtracks. The people I'm still going to see you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!